In this example, we're going to look at how to take a displacement time graph and draw the corresponding velocity time graph for a situation in which our displacement time graph doesn't just consist of a bunch of straight line segments. As you can see here, our displacement time graph is curvy. So how do we draw the velocity time graph for a displacement time graph that looks something like this? Well, when our displacement time graph consists of a bunch of straight lines, all we need to do is find the slopes of those straight lines and those slopes become the y values or the velocity values on our velocity time graph. But we don't have straight lines here. So how do we find those slopes? Well, we're not actually going to calculate slopes here, but we are still going to think about what the slopes are doing. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's start by taking a look at the first part of our displacement time graph. If I were to ask you, in that part of the graph, are the slopes positive or negative? I hope you would say that they're positive because the graph is rising from left to right. Just like when we have a line that has a positive slope, it rises from left to right. So I'm going to put a little plus sign here to indicate that in that part of the graph there, we have positive slopes. Now, please remember that plus sign is referring to the slope of the graph, not the Y values or the displacement values, but rather the slopes there. Now, thinking like that, this part of the graph here then would have negative slope because it falls from left to right. So I'll put a little minus sign there. And once again, we have positive slopes here because the graph is rising from left to right. Now notice that we went from positive slopes here to negative slopes here. And we did that gradually, which means we must have passed through a slope of zero. So is there some point at which the slope is zero. Now that itself is maybe a kind of strange and new concept that is talking about the slope at a single point. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But for now, let's try to agree on which point on this graph between our positive slopes and our negative slopes would be the point at which the slope is zero. And hopefully you'll agree that it's right there. Now, why is that? Well, a line with a slope of zero is a flat horizontal line. And it looks like just for an instant right there, our graph is flat. So it would make sense kind of to say that the slope there is zero. So I'll mark a little point here and say that is the point at which the slope is zero. Now for the same reason, similar reason, we have negative slopes going to positive slopes here, which means we must have passed through a slope of zero and that would be at this point right here. Okay, so we'll say the slope is zero. Now, how do we take these ideas and transfer them over to our velocity time graph? Well, let's start with the points for which we actually have values. That is where our slope is zero. And that happens at a time of three hours and a time of 12 hours. So on our velocity graph, I'm going to go to three hours and 12 hours, and I'm just going to put a point at zero, which represents a velocity of zero oops, kilometers per hour. Okay, now I'm purposely not uh, putting a scale on the vertical axis of the velocity graph here because I'm not really interested in those values right now. I just want to get an idea of what the shape of this graph looks like. So we have our points at zero, the points where our velocity is zero. And what about these other, these other values? Well, we don't actually have other values right now. We have signs and we know we started with positive slopes and then gradually went to a slope of zero. So our velocity graph will start with some positive value and go to our value of zero here. Now, how positive should we start? Let's not worry too much about the details of that number right now. Let's just think uh, it's not as positive sloped as it is here. You know, the beginning here is not as steep. So let's not start too high. Let's start maybe somewhere like uh, maybe here. We'll just say that uh, we have something like that. So again, we're starting with positive values going to a value of zero because our slopes on our displacement graph started positive and went to zero. Now, after that zero slope, our slopes went negative. Now, how did they become negative? Well, gradually they started, you know, in this area here, the slopes aren't that negative. The graph isn't decreasing that quickly. It's not that steep, but by the time we get to here, it's pretty steep. It's decreasing quite a bit more rapidly. So we're going to start with slopes that are fairly negative around here and get more and more negative. How negative? Well, let's take a look at where this graph has its most negative slope. I would say it's probably steepest right around maybe eight, right around there. That's where it's decreasing uh, most rapidly, maybe, eh, maybe closer to like seven and a half, but in that area, that's where it's steepest, which means that's where the slope 
has the most negative value. So what I'm going to do on my velocity graph is I'm going to take my values from this zero here and start making them negative until I get to uh, about uh, eight hours. Okay, now how negative? Well, this looks steeper than this here. So I'm going to go uh, further down the y-axis than whatever I started at here. So maybe something like, I don't know, let's see, something kind of maybe like, ah, eh, whatever, something like that. Okay, and then from that point where the slopes are most negative, notice they start going back to a slope of zero which means my velocity graphs values, the y values, the velocity values, should go back to zero. And we know that that happens, that zero happens at 12 hours. So we'll have perhaps something that looks like this. And then what happens after that point? Well, the slopes become positive and notice they become more and more positive. Here, the graph is not increasing as quickly as it is here. So our, our values for velocity, which are the values for slope here, should get higher and higher and higher as we go over because this graph here is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Uh, so perhaps we have something that looks like, oh, I don't know, something like, maybe like this, okay? And that's right up until, what did we do on this displacement graph? 17 hours, so maybe something, yeah, kind of like that maybe, okay? And notice too that we ended up with a pretty high velocity value compared to the one where we started. And that makes sense because we started or we finished with a steeper slope here, a greater value for slope than when we started. All right. Now I will just mention one more thing before we wrap up here. Notice that my graph uh, kind of looks like a couple of straight lines here with a sharp corner right here. That probably would not be actually what this graph's um, velocity time graph looks like. And the reason is because I know when I made this graph here, I used a function for which the rate of change is actually quadratic. You know, its graph would be a parabola. So in all honesty, this graph should have looked more like a parabola and less kind of pointy here and less straight on the sides. But for getting an idea of how these uh, velocity time graphs work, this is good enough. And there you go.